The system that I'd like to look at now is another system that can carry current, another type of wire that can carry current. But in this case here, instead of the wire being straight, it's bent into a ring. So I might take a straight piece of wire like this, I won't straighten it out again, and bend it into a ring like this. This is sort of the best circle I can form with it. But you can see that it was a wire that I could connect to a battery, and you can see the current could very well flow in through this side right here, go around the ring like this, and flow back out again. So we sort of have this system in here where there's current flowing in this ring, and so it's sort of called a ring of current. The question I'd like to address in this video then is, if you looked at a point on this ring here, somewhere along its axis, so if you can imagine this pen is along the axis of the ring, it might extend out this way along the z-axis, what would the magnetic field be along an axis of a ring like that? And one of the important conclusions also will be, well, what do you think the magnetic field would be at the very center of the ring like that? And again, I want to contrast in your mind, we did this a bit last time, that we had the ring of charge, where say we just had a ring that we deposited a bunch of charge on like this, and we might have asked, what is the electric field at the center of this ring here? And I believe just due to symmetry arguments here, every time there's a one charge on one side of the center, there'll be another charge on the other side of the center. And the electric field in this case here would always cancel away to be zero like that. That was the electric field argument. And we also looked on the axis of the, the ring as well to find the electric field. But remember, this is non-electric field stuff we're talking about. We're talking about the magnetic field. So what I'd like to do is just run you through the calculation of how you find the magnetic field due to a ring of current and some of the ramifications of it here. So we'll just draw a ring like this, and we'll sort of orient it to be on an XY coordinate system like this, XYZ. It is a three-dimensional beast. So there's X, there's Y, and there's Z, something like that. And so the question before us then is what would the magnetic field be right there at that point? I mean, remember, always along the axis of the ring. We'll never deviate from the axis. The, the expressions just become too complicated, so we'll always stick to the axis like that. And this is this ring that I tried to sort of bend or show you here. That's not the right side. This side right here, this ring that I tried to bend. So what we're doing, we're sort of orienting it like this and trying to draw three dimensions on a piece, 2D piece of paper, which never worked. But in either case, here's the ring that I'm talking about. And I'm trying to find the magnetic field out here, a distance Z from the ring. So I hope you can see that perspective. There is a current traveling in this ring current I like that. We won't worry about exactly how the current got fed into it. But nevertheless, there we go. So the way we'll start, we'll start with that, that differential form of the biot savart law, which we started the magnetic field due to a wire with, which is something like this. dB is mu naught over 4 pi. And we had a current here. We had a dx crossed into r hat vector over r squared, something like that. That's the differential form of the biot savart law we saw in class uh, last time. What we can do with this then is uh, work on it a bit and get rid of that crotch product mu naught i over 4 pi. It's going to be an i, a dx, and this cross product between r and dx here will always form a sine function, a sine of theta like that, over r squared, something like that. And you'll keep in mind here that this angle theta is always the, the angle between dx, which is a little bitty segment of the ring here, as we'll find out, and the observation point. So let's maybe draw those things in there. So we're going to choose an observation point, excuse me, a little segment of the circle, the ring up here, and we'll call that width of that circle up there dx, okay? And we will denote the observation point to be something like this. So this red line here would be all our, our hat direction. It's kind of, a, kind of a misleading problem now, so let's see if we can figure out what this angle theta is right here. And remember, it's the angle between the line that takes us to the observation point and the little segment of the ring. So dx might be an unfortunate choice of parameters, but it's the one we're doing with, dealing with. You can see that the dx is actually up here on the ring, and dx, if it was a vector, is sort of going to be pointing in a direction like that. Now, how am I getting that? Well, if I go back to my model of the ring, that remember that as I, as I integrate or, or think about going around the ring, we're always going around the ring. In any given path, there's always sort of an arrow that points tangential to the path as I go around. So at the very top of the ring here, I'm sort of traveling tangential to the ring, so the dx would be in the direction of my fingertip right there, sort of points in the direction of that purple arrow like that. And my observation point, remember, is going to be like way down here along the axis of the ring. And so the dx is up here, and my observation point, sort of my r hat sort of goes down this way to the observation point. So if you look very carefully in here, the angle between the observation point vector r hat and the dx is... 3, 2, 1, 90 degrees in there. So it's kind of easy in this case here. And the sine of 90 is always going to be 1 because theta is always going to be 90 degrees for the system here. So continue processing the Biot and Savart law. So then the dB becomes mu naught over 4 pi. 
i dx over r squared. So the sine theta just completely dropped out. Okay. The next task at hand then is maybe to figure out well what direction would the magnetic field be at this point. And I will just take a quick detour once again to say, well, when we did the electric field due to the ring, maybe you still have that in your mind a bit here. Uh, we had a field point way out there like that. We had a little segment up here. We called it a DQ. Remember, it's all different now. It's not a DQ, it's a DI. But when we, we visualized a magnetic, an electric field, pardon me, emanating from this point, we had a field line that went down like that, and we labeled it something like DE. And if you extend the coordinate system a bit, there was a DE, I don't know, maybe Y going out, and a DEZ like that. And then we sort of processed the uh, components at that point. But we're not doing that in this case here, so we, it would be wrong of us to just go back to the magnetic field here and say, well, there's a magnetic field that's going to emanate all the way down. There'll be a vector here, and we'll find two components. The magnetic field direction doesn't work like that. It's not an electric field. It's a magnetic field. So how do we find that? I will tell you in the next video.